Steinbox works consist of mass-produced everyday items that the artist owned or collected from his friends or purchased from shops. They are usually arranged on a specially designed wedged-shaped shelf. The visual draws similar forms as a relief sculpture. Some objects are repeated, others are singular. The juxtaposition of these objects reminds one of the objects on display in one's homes. They're arranged like a sentence or a musical score. Some objects are grouped by their characteristics such as their form, scale or color, while others are arranged to suggest a sense of hierarchy amongst the objects. The location on which these objects are arranged also vary. Shelves come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and the walls on which the shelves are could either be painted or wallpapered, reflecting the myriad of designs that exist to feed the consumer culture in contemporary society. What's interesting about the objects is the diversity that is presented, ranging from rustic crafts to well-designed pop culture products. The rubber dog chew consistently appears, adding poetic punctuation to the arrangement. What could these everyday objects mean? And how are they different from Duchamp's ready-mades? Steinbach aims to explore the relationship between us and objects in an era of materialism. Objects carry much visual information, such as the social and cultural identities and memories of their users, producers and collectors. They could have sentimental and practical values, as decided by the owner. When the object changes in possession, its meaning might change depending on the owner, yet its genealogy remains. What Steinbach is interrogating is how these objects, singular or juxtaposed against other objects, give meaning to the owner and the viewer, and how they reflect the community's psyche, culture, ritual and even aesthetic appeal. Steinbach also aims to bring innate but overlooked qualities out of objects. He challenges the way we look at familiar things, beyond their function or everyday significance, by juxtaposing them with other objects, repeating them and arranging them in a linear non-hierarchical manner, like a sentence. This forces us to see how the objects communicate with one another to derive new meaning and appreciate its materiality. His approach helps these mass-produced everyday objects retain their aura, like a work in a museum. Paintings are objects with frames. Steinbach's specially designed wedge-shaped shelves are essentially frames for his objects too. The minimalist approach directs the viewer's attention to the objects, yet provides enough contrast to highlight the formal and material properties of these objects. The shelves also help the museum space validate the everyday objects as an artwork, rather than be seen as sculptures, should they be placed on pedestals. Shelves also remind viewers of the act of displaying objects and interrogates how and why we do so. For example, on Western dining tables, salt and pepper shakers are commonly displayed. These quotidian objects are barely noticeable, serving its purpose only when one needs extra seasoning over a meal. When they're decontextualized and placed in a museum, they invite a re-examination. How does a humble object come in a variety of forms? What is the history behind the design of each form? Why would someone choose that particular shaker to be displayed in their home? What does it say about that collector, and the way he or she lives? In essence, the shelves help to further blur the boundaries between art and life. Despite using found objects, Steinbach is different from Duchamp in a few ways. Duchamp's found objects are known as ready-mades, objects with functions stripped off, becoming new objects with new meanings given by the artist. Steinbach's objects are displayed as they are, retaining their inherent purpose and meaning, titled by the very names associated with them. Duchamp's objects were used to break hierarchies of aesthetic judgment. He gave those objects meaning, a retinal artwork that destroys the definition of art. Steinbach's objects have no intention of challenging traditional notions of art. They're challenging viewers to reconsider their relationship with objects in their lives, and with other objects. Finally, Duchamp's objects have been distinguished as ready-mades, thus earning them a higher status in the realm of elitist art history. Steinbach refused to see his objects as ready-mades, because his artworks are exploring how objects are arranged and displayed in ordinary life. Thus, their ordinary status remains. This allows viewers to focus on how they are presented, rather than what they represent. It reinforces Steinbach's intention, to interrogate the act of collecting and displaying objects in our lives. Steinbach has many influences. Apart from Marcel Duchamp for the use of found objects, and Donald Judd for the minimalist shelves, Steinbach was also influenced by Joseph Kossuth, the conceptual artist who explored if the text is more powerful than an image when conveying an idea, thus investigating if the concept of the artwork is more valuable than its visual appearance. Similarly, Steinbach's works question if the idea embedded in the object is more important than its retinal qualities. He was also influenced by Robert Smithson, a land artist who used found earthly materials to create site-specific works, thus interrogating if the space that the artwork resides in adds meaning to the artwork. Finally, he was influenced by the Neo Geo movement, where a loose group of artists in America engaged in a critique of mechanization and consumerism of modern society. His works reflect the minimalist, pop and op art combination of the movement. Despite having thousands of copies around the world, this very object is ironically displayed as though it is a uniquely beautiful one of a kind, like any other artwork, thus highlighting the romanticized effects of consumerism. Steinbach's technique is selecting, categorizing and arranging the objects in various ways, 
from considering their aesthetic qualities to their ethnographic characteristics, thereby emphasizing their identities, inherent meanings and associations. Halloween, Dutch champion objects, monochrome, he leaves it to the viewer to decipher the combination, and the identity of the person that could have this displayed in their homes. When he plans how to arrange the objects, he moves it around like a child's play, embracing incongruity and chance, just like how we arrange objects in life. Such a playful approach also allows for moments of unanticipated meaning that arise, capturing combinations created between sense and nonsense. He also positions the objects in larger architectural installations, sometimes colored with decorative wallpaper, heightening the active display, and the importance of the spaces in contributing to the choice of objects to be displayed. He also titles the works to point out the names by which we use to identify objects, or use titles as another found object that is added onto the shelf, thus adding new ingredients into the conversation.